Welcome to the Bath Biz and Foam YouTube channel. My name is Robin French Smith, and today we're going to talk about the Kata Scarecrow Mold. I recently did a post in the Bath Biz and Foam Bath Bomb and Bubble Bar support group on Facebook asking which molds people had had problems with recently. And um, one of the molds that was specifically requested was the Kata Scarecrow Mold, so we're going to go over it today. Now, when I'm using this mold, I'm actually using our low humidity bath bomb recipe because my humidity has recently dropped. I've done a couple of videos talking about humidity. So if you're curious about how humidity can affect bath bombs or why I might need a low humidity bath bomb recipe, um, I will include a little link at the top of the page or the top of this video. And you can click on that if you're interested in finding out more about humidity and bath bombs. I did mix some dye into my wet ingredients. I don't very often use dye in my bath bombs, but I wanted this bath bomb to be yellow and yellow lakes don't really color the water very well. So when I use yellow lakes, I like to add a little bit of yellow dye into the mix because it helps the water, you know, the color just be more vibrant when it's in the water. So I mixed all that color in and then now I am mixing my lakes in. When I'm mixing lakes into bath bomb mix, this is my favorite way to do it. If I'm doing it by hand, I add it to the mix before I add my citric acid, which you see sitting right there on the left on my scale and which I'm adding right now. If I'm mixing bath bombs in my stand mixer, it doesn't really matter if I add the lakes before or after the citric acid. Um, I just, I find that they mix in better or I'm able to make sure that the color is mixed all the way in a lot easier when I'm doing it by hand if I add the color before I add the citric acid. Now I'm adding my binder and I'm also going to make sure that I mix that in well. So you know one of the things that I debate whenever I'm doing these videos is like should I cut the scenes where I'm mixing but I try to leave as much of it in there as I can I mean I fast forward through it but I try to leave as much of it in there as I can because I really want you guys to see like it requires quite a lot of mixing to get a good bath bomb mix and that's one of the reasons I prefer to use a stand mixer because my hands get tired my arms get tired um, but over time, you know, a stand mixer just makes my life easier. So here is the mold and I can see that the reason or I'm assuming that the reason that people asked about it was because the arms are so far away from the body and I'm imagining or I'm guessing I, I didn't have problems with it, but I'm I'll show you why I think I didn't have problems with it and what I do for things like that. But I, you know, the arms can break off. The arms are thinner and they can break off. So I'll show you what I do about it. Now, the first thing I did is I lightly filled the mold and then I kind of gave it a little shake to make sure everything settled in there. And now I'm adding some embeds into our scarecrow guy. You do want to be kind of careful where you place embeds when you are using bath bombs that have thinner parts like this. So instead of adding embeds into his arms, I'm going to go ahead and just crush some of these black embeds into the little area where his arms are. That way I still have color that comes out, but I'm not worried about an embed being in there and breaking his little arms off. So next I'm going to continue to lightly fill the mold up. I'm mounding the mix up and then kind of scraping it off, making sure everything is evenly placed. And then I add a little bit of extra mix to each arm and I just give it a pat and I do that twice. A little bit of extra mix and then a pat and then you know kind of even it out make sure that I don't have any areas that are higher or lower but by packing those arms a little bit firmer I'm gonna give them more stability and they are gonna be less likely to break there are occasions where this doesn't work and where you know contrary to what you would normally think um, over packing thinner areas can actually cause problems. I can't remember, there was a mold I recently had that was like that, but with the scarecrow, it works perfectly. Now, when I say overpacking, I'm not really overpacking, right? I'm just adding a little bit of extra mix in there. You could definitely overpack it, and then that could cause problems. So basically, all I did was just made sure that they are stronger and, um, 
didn't like pack the mix in there super heavy. I still kept that mix light and fluffy. They just gave it a little bit of extra help along the way. Tapping the mold on the back to help release the suction that exists between the bath bomb and the mold. I wish I had a dollar for every time I said that. Slightly releasing the shell from the body of the bath bomb. Now this is a brand new bath bomb mold. In this video, this is the very first time I have ever used this mold. When you have a mold that is brand new and fresh, it can be a little bit sticky on the sides because it's still kind of tight and it has to, over time, the shell will loosen up from the rest of the mold and the plungers and stuff. Um, but when it's brand new and fresh, it can be hard to get it through. So one of the things you can do is just make a batch of bath bombs with it um, or run that shell across the plunger like several times and just kind of like, <laughs> I don't know another way to say it. It's like, like you're going to mix a track or something like DJ bath bomb in the house. Anyway, um, yeah, they need to be loosened up just a little bit. And so it was a little bit tight. Fortunately, it didn't break or anything like that, but that can happen with brand new mold. So don't give up. I think that if anything, the voodoo doll bath bomb mold has taught, I should have taught you, don't give up on your bath bombs. Also, don't do that. <laughs> that right there, where I moved the bath bomb, don't do that when they're fresh and they have little weird parts that stick out the sides. Once it's dry, it's fine. She'll be steady, steady Freddy. But when she's wet, don't do that. That's kind of a dumb move on my part, but whatever. Um, okay, let's make another one. <laughs> eh, eh, what am I doing? Um, light and fluffy mix. Light and fluffy mix. Shaking it in the mold to make sure it's all kind of distributed evenly throughout the mold. And then I'm going to add my embeds. And I would say that, you know, just like I said, be careful where you put your embeds. If you put them right at the joint of the arm, like that dark red that I have there is kind of like offset from the joint of the arm. So I think it's fine. Um, but, you know, just be careful if you put them right at the joint of the arm or, you know, if you have the Kate across the mermaid tail, any of those things where it has kind of that thinner area. You know, you don't want to put an embed right there at the joint. You want that to be the firmest part of your bath bomb. I'm wiping my gloves off to make sure I don't get black bath bomb embed dust in the rest of my mix and now filling up my mix filling up the mold and uh light and fluffy is the way it's gonna help us you know keep your mix light and fluffy it's if you want a bath bomb that floats god help you okay but it, that is one of the things that you can do. You know, keep the mix light and fluffy. It's not, it's not at fail proof. Sorry, I'm not even going to go there, but it's not fail proof. Um, and then again, lightly uh, adding a little bit of extra mix, just patting it down. I'm not, I'm not pressing very hard. I'm just lightly patting down and I do that twice. Um, you may only need to do it once. You may need to do it three times. Each bath bomb mold has its own kind of unique idiosyncrasies, little, little things to it that make it unique and special all of its own. However, they all have similarities and that's one of them. Uh, pressing evenly on all the sides. I know it looks like I'm pressing really hard, but that's just because my table is bendy. <laughs> giving it a nice tap on that thick plunger piece before I turn it over, just so that when I unmold it, I don't have to worry about possibly breaking the bath bomb. Tapping the flat piece on the sides to release the suction. And there he is, isn't he cute? If there's any pieces that pick up, just gently tap them down. It's totally normal and it happens. So, you know, if bath bombs, bath bombs don't have to be perfect. They just have to be beautiful for you. You know, you gotta love them. That shell is a little bit sticky. If you can't, it's hard to tell, but I am just kind of gently rocking it. It is a little bit difficult too, because the shell is thinner. I do prefer the shells to be a little bit thicker, um, but I also know that it, there's probably all kinds of reasons for those shells to be a little bit thinner. I'm sure it helps with print time and uh, you know, the weight of the bath bomb, which is gonna help with shipping and all those things. But um, 
it, it can be hard to get your little fingers on the side. Um, so, you know, just if that's hard for you, then there are little plunger accessories that you can get. You can put underneath the mold and it like helps push it through. I don't use one of those because I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just chaotic and I don't. Um, but yeah. And let's get a side view on it. So, I don't know, so I can say that I did it. <laughs> And you also get to see me in my PJ pants, well, not PJ pants, but my soft pants. Um, Cause I'm feeling comfy. I'm making bath bombs, feeling comfy. So filling the mold lightly with mix, giving it a nice little shape, putting my embeds in. The embed colors that I chose are that deep red and also a bright red. I hope that they look cool in the bathtub. I actually haven't tested one of these yet as of the audio recording of this. So I hope to test it soon. Man, I, just, I got so much things going on. I'm gonna use one of these black embeds and crush it. Yeah, baby. Crushing it so I can add some little color into the hands. Is it necessary? No, I just wanted to, I just want to give it a shot. Just give it a shot and try it. And it's also, you know, a good example of why like you don't always need your bath bombs to be formed perfectly. <laughs> like you can use powdered embeds. It totally works. And gonna fill him up the rest of the way. I took it off my scale because I don't care anymore. <laughs> I, just, I don't care anymore. I just want him to be done. So filling him up. And um, I mean, I just hope that you can see like, okay, it's real fluffy. It's mounded up. I'm gonna flatten it out so it's even. And then I'm gonna go back to this arms. Lightly add mix, press. Lightly add mix, press. Do that twice. Do that to both sides. Lightly add mix, press. Lightly add mix. Lightly press. That's it. And then just kind of top them off the rest of the way. Um, so that, you know, I don't want one side to be higher necessarily than the other. Part of the reason too that it's good that we're packing those arms is because the body of the bath bomb has embeds, which is going to make it denser. So when I'm adding that extra mix to the arms, I'm helping the arms become denser and making them basically even to the overall density of the rest of the bath bomb. If I didn't do that, if I didn't pack those arms, then when I went to mold it and press it, the arms would be thinner. I would be able to press them in thinner than the body. And then that's why they would break when I was unmolding. Okay. So if I didn't have embeds, it might not be necessary for me to do number one, it might not be necessary for me to do the extra packing on the arms anyway if I didn't have embeds, but maybe even just doing one layer would be fine. So that is just something to keep in mind. You know, like sometimes the function of the bath bomb is affected by the embeds that we're using. Sometimes it's affected by the technique that we're using, the mix that we're using. There's just all kinds of factors that affect how a bath bomb mold works. So I know it's easy to blame a bath bomb mold when things go wrong, but just keep in mind that there's tons of factors that come into play. I removed that back piece and now I think this is a good way that you can see me kind of oh, flex. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Trying to get the just kind of trying to rock that shell down. Um, I did make a batch after this and of course I didn't have to do that as much because the shell had been worked in a little bit and over time it'll become real loose and it'll just like slide right off but this is very common for a fresh off the printer, brand new bath bomb mold. <laughs> so don't be surprised when that happens. It's no big deal. You can do it. And lightly, I'm not pressing down by the way, I am only pulling up on the shell. If that makes you nervous, if it makes you nervous to do that, then put something underneath the bath bomb, take the shell off, and then flip it, okay? If it makes you nervous to do that way. And there's older videos that you can see where I do that technique if you have no clue what I'm talking about. There he is. Isn't he cute? He was massive, I think like nine ounces. So a little, little bit bigger than I typically prefer from a bath bombs to be, but it's fine. Let's paint this sucker so we can get a cuter design, you know, see what he looks like. So lightly spraying the bath bomb with some rubbing alcohol first, and then I'm gonna paint him. I think I'll zoom through this so that you don't have to see every single detail of me painting him. But um, yeah, 
Actually, this month in Patreon, the month of October in Patreon, we are talking about painting bath bombs. And I actually am going into great detail about how to paint bath bombs. So if that is something that you're interested in, you would like more information on that Patreon, uh, even if this is not October when you're watching this, even if this is like a year later, that is still there on our Patreon. So you can always look it up and find out more information about painting bath bombs. I talk about some of my secret, top secret skills. Skills? My top secrets, you know, secret little things that I do, little techniques that I do. Um, how to mix bath bomb paint, how to, you know, create hybrid bath bomb paints, how to pick colors, how to, you know, do things on purpose, how to do things on accident, which you do if you mess things up. Um, across the screen, you see scrolling the list of our Patreons for the month of October. They are amazing. They're awesome. I love them so much and I am super grateful for them. And so I just wanted to give them a shout out and say thank you for making this possible. Look how cute he turned out. If you would like more information about the recipes that I mentioned today, you could always come visit us at Bath, Fizz and Foam, Bath, Fizz and Foam .com, which is our website. We have all kinds of amazing recipes. We have blog posts. We have things, you know, help you make the many amazing things that you want to make. Like you want to make this best ever emulsified body butter lotion. We got that for you. You want to know, uh, read a blog post about what you do when you screw up a bath bomb batch and you fail. I, I got that for you. You could also come visit us at a uh, bath, and foam, bath bomb and bubble bar support group on Facebook. We are a community of friendly, helpful, kind makers. We would love to see you there. I do a free Make With Me Monday every Monday where I do a project with you together and that content is free. We also have some t-shirts on our Etsy if you make bath bombs and you're interested in showing people, you know, your shirts like um, this one that says, look at my balls. <laughs> yep, we have that shirt for you. It is there, you could find it. And uh, so I will leave links in the description for our website, for our Facebook group, for our t-shirt, shop on Etsy where we also have some recipes and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'll leave links in the description for that. But for now, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate it more than you'll ever know. And as always, happy making.